Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for another stock pick of the day. It is July 24th, quickly running out of days in another month, heading into August very quickly. So we will have a couple of videos coming up, our stocks to watch for August and our dividends paid out for July videos will be coming up this weekend, probably Friday and Saturday. So look for those. But today we are going to cover Black Hills Corporation. This is a utility company and actually probably over the next couple days we're going to be covering some utility companies. I just opened a new position in Next Era Energy and I'm looking for one or two others to possibly open up and add into the utility sector. Uh, so this is one of them in attempt to find a new position. Black Hills Corporation, let's jump right in and take a look. Black Hills Corporation, if you want to know more about them, check them out, ir.blackhillscorp.com. That is ir.b-l-a-c-k-h-i-l-l-s-c-o-r-p.com. That is their homepage where I pulled this information from. Black Hills Corp, ticker uh, BKH on the New York Stock Exchange, is a customer-focused, growth-oriented utility company with a tradition of improving life with energy and vision to be the energy partner of choice. Based in Rapid City, South Dakota, we serve 1.3 million natural gas and electric utility customers in eight states, Arkansas, Colorado, Iowa, Kansas, Montana, Nebraska, South Dakota, and Wyoming. So they are out west and down south primarily. And this was a little uh, blurb that I pulled from their homepage. And if you went in there, you could, you know, click on each one of these, right? Power production, they uh, get power from coal, wind, solar, uh, oil, natural gas, and they store natural gas. They control the lines that bring it to your house, right? All the different information uh, around their distribution lines, oil and gas, natural, uh, natural gas distribution lines as well. So if you clicked on each one of those, it would kind of give you a blurb of how they distribute oil or energy all the way to your house, right? And we are talking again about Black Hills Corporation. And here again, down at the bottom, if you wanted to check them out on their homepage, let's take a look at why we're looking at them today. Well, they were down, obviously, most of the times so we're looking at companies, I say 99% of the time, we're looking at companies that have pulled back on the day to see if we can see any value there. So we are talking about Black Hills Corporation, ticker BKH, out of the utility sector, closed out the day at $60.90, down 0.60%. So not down a ton. Actually, a lot of companies were up again today. So it's starting to get harder whenever we have all these green days to find companies uh, to pull back. So we're getting a little selective here. And so again, if you have any to share, go ahead and drop them down in the comment section below that you'd like me to review, and I will look at them on a day they pull back. But let's keep on going with Black Hills Corporation here. 52-week range, as low as $56.75, as high as $79.78. So at $60.90, they are closer to their 52-week low, though it looks like they were up in the after hours at $62 per share, 1.8%. Uh, but that, we'll see what they're at tomorrow. Average volume, $470 million. Today's was $520 pretty much a sell-off, a big sell-off in the morning, a bit of a recovery around lunchtime, and then a little bit of a sell-off there. And we recovered a little bit at the end of the day. Market cap of $4.076 billion, beta of 0.58, so they are less volatile than the overall market, about half as volatile than the overall market. Beta, that's what it means, the volatility of the market, one being the market, anything less being less volatile, anything over being more volatile. Price to earnings, P.E. ratio, $15.70 per share. EPS earnings per share is $3.88 per share. Pretty nice there for a utility company. Earnings date, the next one coming up will be August 2nd. Four dividend currently is $2.50 paid out on the year. They are a quarterly payer, so divide by four, but we will see that here in a minute, so you don't have to do that math if you don't want to. Nice dividend yield of 4.08% on this one. We want to see if they're growing. We'll see that here in a little bit. Now, I always like to look at under statistics, dividend yield theory to see if there's potential value there. What we do is we go to the five-year dividend average. That's a 3.26. We compare it to the current 4.08 or forward. It's the same number, 4.08. And if this number is higher, which it is, that speaks to undervaluation. If this number was lower, which it's not, would speak to undervaluation. So according to dividend yield theory, this one here, Black Hills, Black Hills Corporation, is potentially undervalued, again, at least according to dividend yield theory. They do have a decent payout ratio for a utility company, only 62.89%. Their payout was May 17th, uh, or their ex-dividend date, their last one was May 17th. Payout was June, so you would be in line for their next dividend if you bought them now. And according to Yahoo Finance, they have a 
one-year target estimate of $65.67. So that would speak to some potential upside appreciation in the stock price as well. Now, another one I like to look at under financials is free cash flow. Now, you're going to find a lot of information under financials. You'll find their balance sheet, their income statement, revenue, their debt, a lot of information under there. You want to look at that make sure re revenue is growing over time. Make sure they're paying down debt and they don't have so much that they can't, uh, you know, pay it off or, or, or make their payments. You're not in, not in tr uh, potential danger of going out of business or, or cutting the dividend because they're so far in, in debt that they can't maintain a dividend. Uh, as well as their assets over liabilities. You want to make sure they have enough assets to cover all their liabilities. But we're looking at free cash flow today because we want growing free cash flow because we want growing dividends and dividends are paid out of the cash flow. Now, I will say utility companies typically are always in the negative. So this one is not a very good metric, but we're going to look at it anyway. 2019, negative 312 million. 2020, negative 225 million. Big jump in 2021, negative 742 million. And down again in 2022, negative 19, 5, 19 uh, million here. So in the negative pretty much every year, a lot of write-offs and stuff for these type of companies. They are cash intensive, capital intensive. They have a lot of money going out to maintain their utility lines. Their, this one is oil and gas. So their oil and gas lines, distribution lines in general, right? Their facilities that create the power if they're in that. So this one does. So... For these type of companies, utilities, I take this with a grain of salt. Obviously, we don't want negative free cash flow, but with a 62.89% payout ratio, it's obvious that they can cover the dividend and that this these are probably write downs. They're writing down a lot of that capital that they've spent to maintain their business, which is what utility companies do. A big a bonus here, they are buying back their own shares. At least they were up till 2021. They didn't do any buybacks last year. Looks like they chose to pay down, uh, uh, probably pay off a bunch of debt because they didn't have a big write-off on these dates. So that may be part of the reason there. But I'm not as concerned with negative free cash flow on a company like this. Now, if we were to see, you know, growing free cash flow over time, actually it was... Uh, decreasing 2019 to 2020, jumped up in 2021 and then decreasing again. So let's say if this was growing every year over time, I probably would be a little concerned then. Let's keep on going. Now, I always recommend more than one source. So the one we saw before was Yahoo Finance. The other one that I like is stockanalysis.com. Go ahead, pick out your own sources, guys. If you don't like mine, that's fine. There are plenty of other ones out there. Just make sure you're picking at least two so you can back check the information that you're getting is accurate. Don't just trust one source. You may be getting some information that is not accurate. That's the idea here. They have six stock analysts that take a look at this. They call it a consensus hold. I would I would tend to agree with this one. This one would be one where if they pull it back into the $50 range, you know, closer to the $56 low estimate that they have here, I might be interested, but I want to try to get these ones as cheap as possible. There's not going to be a lot of growth in them. The utility companies just don't grow. They're like a uh, high yield uh, uh bond payment out right so you get a little bit of growth unlike a bond where you might not get any growth you'll get some growth but we'll see how fast the dividends are growing on this one uh here in a minute so low estimate of 56 dollars that would be currently lower than where it currently sits so that would be 8.08 percent decline from the 60 dollars 90 cents from where it currently sits average estimate of 63 dollars 83 cents that would be a 4.78 percent increase in stock price and if it happened to hit their high of $68, that would be an 11.62% increase in the stock price here. So not a big, you know, range here, even from their low estimate to their high estimate. And that's another thing you're going to see with a lot of utility companies. They just aren't fast growers, right? They're, a lot of them are just kind of steadily meandering along. So you want to make sure you buy these ones with good valuation and as low as possible. You want to try to build in some of that upside appreciation when you buy them. Now, another one that I like to look at, this one under statistics, return on equity and return on invested capital. I like 10% or better. This does not meet either one. 8.6 for return on equity, 3.9 for return on invested capital. Again, very capital intensive businesses, not going to get a lot of return on capital, but I would like higher numbers than this. Uh, these are a little low. Return on equity is not terrible. Return on invested capital is pretty low. Let's jump over to dividends, see if they're growing over time. They are. This actually for a dividend growth company a utility company specifically this is pretty good gr dividend growth 5.11 percent uh it's higher than a lot of utilities a lot of utilities are down one two three percent you're lucky if you get a four uh, next year energy is growing a little bit faster than this but this one here 5.11 percent dividend growth and as i said payout ratio only 64 percent i do like that overall the metrics are not terrible 
I just would like this to pull back under the $60 range, like $57, $58 range. I'd probably be interested. Right now, I feel like it's just a little overvalued. But let's, let's look at the dividend. 2020, May of 2020, 53 and a fraction of a penny cents. Uh, 2021, they jumped it up, or no, 2020, November 2020, they jumped it up to 56 cents and a fraction of a penny. In 2021, November, they jumped it up to 59 cents in a fraction of a penny. Then they jumped it up again in November 16th, 2020. So it looks like they raised it in November. So I would probably look for that again in this November if they're going to continue to raise it. And currently at 65 cents in a fraction of a penny. They always throw in that, you know, five, half a, half a penny there. Uh, but really 62 cents, call it. So growing dividend growth, uh, just not interested right now until they pull back a little bit but this is on my watch list i i would like this i do like the dividend growth here and i looked at their three five and ten year and it's pretty consistent uh five year dividend uh, or i'm sorry five percent dividend growth at their three year at their five year and at their ten year so for a utility company this one's actually growing their dividend pretty well and the metrics do not look very bad overall uh, i would throw this on the watch list if you're interested in a company like this this is the vested interest stock screener. This is how I look at a business. This is how I look at a company. If it's in my portfolio to see if I want to continue to add to it and make sure it meets these metrics. And if it is not, I run through in the same way I set up the videos here. I run through, you know, understand the business, growing free cash flow, growing dividend over time, dividend payout ratio, 75% or less check valuation based on dividend yield theory, buy below current cost basis or within 15% of 52 week low. So what that means, if I own it, I'd like it below my cost basis first. If it's not below my cost basis, is it within 15% of a 52 week low? If it's not, I'm not going to add to the position or add it into the portfolio if it's not already in it. Return on invested capital, return on equity, 10% or better. And for financial companies, I, I add in price to book. A one is fair value. Anything under one is undervalued. Must meet four of seven to be investable. Financials must meet five of eight. Well, that is really it for this one. Let me know what you think of Black Hills. Is it in your portfolio? Is it a utility company you're watching? Do you stay away? From, some people stay away from the utility sector altogether, or maybe you use an ETF if you go that route. Let me know. I do respond to the comment section, so I'm always interested to read what you're, you guys are saying. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community, building a community of like-minded dividend growth investors so we can share our experiences, stocks like this, tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. And again, these trying to keep these videos uh, relatively short, see if we can find value out in the market and not waste any of your time. Uh, so I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. So again, if you have a stock you'd like me to cover in the Stock Pick of the Day series, go ahead and drop it down below and I'll work it into the rotation on a day it pulls back. And this is Shane signing off. Wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. So I'm only sharing my opinion and investing in general for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk of Canada's money and should never invest any amount not comfortable losing. Always do your own research, invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria, or seek the advice counselor, certified financial advisor.